Hi, I'm Johannes Roberts, the director of Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. I'm here to break down the trailer for you. Every story has a beginning. Discover the origin of evil. Claire arrives in, in Raccoon City looking, uh, looking for her brother, Chris. She grew up in Raccoon City uh, in the orphanage with her brother and ran away when she was just a child. And she's now back. Claire Redfield is a very haunted soul um, who ran away from uh, Raccoon City when she was very young um, because she felt she saw some things and she feels it's an evil place where there's some nefarious things going on. And she has spent her, you know, the last few years reinforcing uh, her knowledge on Umbrella. We need to expose Umbrella. Watch this. I'm afraid, Claire. I'm afraid of what they're going to do to this town. In this scene, Claire is is um, playing a videotape um, of a character that we'll see more of in the, in the movie called Ben Bertolucci, um, who is a conspiracy theorist on Umbrella and who's been feeding Claire with um, information of what he believes are Umbrella's evil doings. William Birkin is, is a major role in this uh, movie, which, which really does uh, draw a lot of its influence from the second Resident Evil game. And we will see a lot of Birkin throughout the movie. And he's a really interesting and quite a complex character in this film. You see, Umbrella, they have an incident. I'm talking Chernobyl, if you know what I mean. Lisa Trevor was a, was a really great character for this movie because not been in any of the other movies before. And she, in the game, she's quite a haunted, tragic, but terrifying character. And I really wanted to take that and bring that into this movie. So she's pretty scary, but she's also really quite tragic. I really wanted this uh, movie to, to reflect the game uh, as closely as I could in, in many ways. So with the police station, for instance, and the mansion, we we um, contacted Capcom, or Cap we were working hand in hand with Capcom, to be honest, uh, and uh, they gave us the actual blueprints for the police station and the mansion, so we could build a, a life version of the game. So it was it was super fun doing that kind of stuff. The truck driver was actually my way into the script when I was writing it. I was so obsessed with the second game when I was writing this um, movie. And so it, it, we really do use the opening of the second game heavily. This, this movie is very heavily based around Leon Kennedy's first day uh, on his job as, as per the uh, games, uh, but particularly the first Resident Evil 2, not the um, remake. I really wanted to go back to nerdy, uh, nerdy, geeky uh, Leon Kennedy. Chief Irons uh, in this movie is, is, a, is a very large role and Donald Logue really, I just sort of let him go you know we wound him up and let him go and he just went for it so he's hilarious it's it, it, there's humor in it but he's 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 a bad man but he's not he's not evil he's just he's in the script he's described as someone who's counting down his days to till he can go on the golf course and collect his pension and and he's this uh, sort of slightly overweight amazing he's, he's all about that mustache but he's 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 a fantastic role in this movie. It was really important to me in this movie to to scare people and, and to create a kind of dark, creepy atmosphere that I felt that um, maybe had been missing from the, the previous movies, which were much more action. So it's super, obviously visually dark movie, but my influences were really heavily, heavily 70s uh so kind of on some of the movies that influenced the game obviously all the romero movies um but but also some slightly more classic kind of uh, like the exorcist and uh just 70 filmmakers 70s filmmaking in general uh, was was very heavily 
influencing this movie and and John Carpenter. I mean, as you'll see throughout the trailer, it has a Assault and Precinct 13 vibe, which was key to this movie. Without a doubt, the the hardest thing about this movie was the zombies, because there's so much history and, uh, and weight uh, when you do a zombie movie, weight of people's expectations. Are they slow zombies? Are they fast zombies? Are they Romero zombies? Are they Zack Snyder's zombies? It was so important to me to scare people whilst giving them, you know, I, I'm a very classic uh, person in my taste and so so I wanted that kind of Romero feel to it but I needed I needed these zombies to be scary and disturbing but yeah we we do a mixture of fast and slow because there is different zombies in in the game the crimson head and people you know turning and getting sick and there's a lot of variety in this one of the things I had to do in this movie was to somehow combine the two games, the, the mansion and the police station. And obviously they, in the in gaming world, they, they don't take place together, you know, um, in the same timeline. Um, but I really wanted that to happen within the same timeline here. So we had to, I had to condense that in, into the narrative. And I think it works really super well. So you have the whole um, Alpha team going to find Bravo team whilst Claire comes in to find her brother and the two narratives work concurrently. The eagle-eyed uh, amongst viewers might notice this video from Code Veronica which is Ashford Twins. I, I always found it a, a really disturbing little video so I really wanted to Put it into this movie and we bring it in a little in, into in some of the experimentations that uh, Dr. Birkin is doing but I, I always really just wanted to recreate that video I found it just found it disturbing for some reason ripping me we actually use Capcom gave us proper game footage and I use a little tiny shot in the movie of the real Ashford twins footage in there I snuck it in what we have when the film starts is Claire coming into town and she starts to see that it's, you know, Raccoon City in this movie is a ghost town and the people in the town are very sick. And we really try to create a very Stephen King kind of vibe of, of this dying town and creepy people staring behind windows and stuff like that. We should split up. With the interiors of the both the police station and the mansion, the key interiors, so the the main lobby of the police station, the main lobby of the mansion, the library, we were literally one to one. Uh, if we could, you know, as much as I, I, I possibly could, we literally recreated these locations um, exactly. It was it was actually really nerdily fun to walk onto those locations that you've been playing. The game you've been playing and, and then walking onto the locations. It, it's, I can't really explain it. I've never had that experience before, but it was very fun. The helicopter sequence here is is a little bit of uh, the second game with the police with the helicopter smashing into the police station. I transferred it to the first game, mixing it with uh, our um, storyline of Vickers, the cowardly uh, helicopter pilot. I, I sort of grabbed a bit of two and a bit of one, put it together here. What the? Most people will recognize this is the uh, uh, very iconic turnaround zombie sequence, which is really the first time we see a zombie in, in the computer games. Um, and I wanted to recreate this as, as closely as, as, as possible in the movie. And we had so much fun doing it. And uh, the guy was 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 the strangest, he was he was that zombie. He recreated the moves and the, uh, it was it was crazy. It, it was, but it was a great fun sequence. To, to shoot, it, it just sort of fell together really well and we had a lot of fun with it. I really wanted to use Itchy Tasty uh, in this movie because I, I just always found that little uh, document. I, I found the phrase just really disturbing, so I wanted to use it in the movie. I wouldn't want to give too much away while talking about the uh, the creatures in this movie, but we 
we had a lot of fun with all the different monsters. I tried to get in as many as I possibly could. I was, I was like a big kid on this movie. Um, so, and again, we worked very closely with Capcom. We got, you know, all their designs and references and um, we would we would use them. Or we'd always use that as a starting point, sometimes, sometimes changing or, you know, beefing up. We obviously had to use the uh, the liquor, any Resident Evil movie that's trying to go back to the, the roots of it all. So it was great fun to 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 bring the liquor into the movie again. Um, and we did a lot of designs. We did, you know, we actually went tried all kinds of crazy designs. You know, tried to like completely reimagine it. And and you know, once we sort of got past that. Then we we actually went very classic, really faithful. Again, worked with Capcom to get the get the their original designs of the, the liquor and 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 just created our own version from that. Um, and it's really cool. It's a the liquor sequence in this movie is just amazing. Into a crisis. Thank you for watching the Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City trailer with me uh, and listening to me break it down. The movie is out on November 24th exclusively in theatres. What the?